Hello, we're talking about epistasis today and this is an A2 topic. We're going to start with a Wikipedia quote. In genetics, epistasis is the phenomenon where the effects of one gene are modified by one or several other genes. And there are various other definitions that come with this. In essence, epistasis is when one gene changes the way another gene is expressed. We're going to think of some biochemical ways that that could happen, and then we're going to look at an example of that happening in cats. So, epistasis is the interaction between two genes, and here are some examples for you to think about. Maybe gene A codes for a transcription factor which switches on gene B. What's a transcription factor? That is a protein which binds to DNA and switches on another gene. So gene A codes for a protein which then goes on and binds to the DNA just upstream of gene B and switches on transcription of gene B. Now maybe that gene B could code for a transport protein which imports the substrate that's going to be needed by the enzyme which is coded for by gene C. And then gene C may code for an enzyme which makes the substrate for the enzyme coded for by gene D. And well let's have a look at that how that goes before we go on to cat colour. We've got gene A here, and gene A codes for protein A. We go through transcription, translation, it makes protein A. Protein A, we've said, is a transcription factor, so I'm going to abbreviate to TF, and that goes and switches on gene B. I've abbreviated gene to G because I didn't have enough room to write it all. Gene B, then we have transcription and translation, that makes protein B, and protein B imports a substrate which is going to be needed by protein C. So, substrate for C we'll write here and that is imported via protein B. So that means protein C now has its substrate. Protein C is coded for by gene C and so the expression, i.e. how we see the effects of gene C is going to be entirely dependent on whether or not gene B works to make that protein B to import the substrate for protein C. Now protein C, that takes the substrate for C and it converts it into the substrate for D. Protein C is an enzyme which converts this, the substrate for C, into the substrate for protein D and then protein D will convert that finally into our product. So there are all sorts of ways that this can happen. And let's think about it in cats. In cats, in little putty cats, you get, I'll, I won't do that again. We get, first of all, a redness gene. Now that's coded for by X big O or X little O. If you are X big O, X big O, then you are a female red cat. If you are X big O, X little O, then you are a tortoiseshell cat, i.e. you've got patches of red and patches of not red. And if you're X little O, X little O, you're not a red cat. So we would describe X big O and X little O as codominant. The next gene to think about is the browning gene. Can you guess what the browning gene does? Yeah, it kind of makes them brown. And we have big B, which is going to make you black, and little b, which is going to make you brown, and big B is dominant over little b. Quick question, how can you have a tortoiseshell male cat? The question, because if you are x, that's going to be a big O, and x little o, then you become tortoiseshell. But if you're a male cat, how can you have that? Because if you're x big O y, then you're not tortoiseshell, you are red. Or x little o y, then you are not tortoiseshell, you are maybe brown or black or whatever it might be. How can you have a male tortoiseshell cat? Well, one of the ways is that they can have a chromosomal mutation. So you might get a male which is x big O, x little o y. It would be an infertile cat because its sex chromosomes won't be able to pair up properly at meiosis. But nonetheless, it will be male, it'll have the male bits, and it will be tortoiseshell. Next question then, how do we get a seal point Siamese like this? We have, in play now, the C gene. And the C gene codes for tyrosinase, and tyrosinase converts tyrosine, which is an amino acid, into a pigment precursor. 
and that pigment precursor is then a substrate for other enzymes which go on and convert it into the pigments. Siamese occur because they have little cs, little cs. Now little cs, little cs codes for a tyrosinase enzyme which denatures at the cat's body temperatures and therefore where the cat is warm they do not make the pigment. So you can see this cat here is clearly warm here because the enzyme there is denatured, it's not going to make the pigment, uh, but is cold on his little nose. And really the cat's body then acts as a thermometer and you can see where they're hot and cold. So clearly they're cold in their pores as well. So that produces an effect called pointing. So can you see this is an effect of epistasis? We've got gene C coding for an enzyme which then generates the substrate for another enzyme from a different gene and so these genes are acting interactively. We then get these phenotypes generated. We've got a red cat, a black cat, indeed a tortoiseshell cat. We've got red pointed cats. This here is a red pointed cat uh, and we have a black pointed cat. That red pointed cats are called red points, black pointed cats are called seal points because why would you call it a black pointed cat when it's a black pointed cat? Now, next gene we're going to think about is the density gene. That is handily called gene D and allele big D codes for a transport protein move pigments into the growing hairs and that's useful if you want pigmented hairs obviously. Now little d is coding for another version of that transport protein which just doesn't do it really quite so well. So if you're little d, little d, you get a less dense pigment because you manage to put less pigment into your hairs. Again this is epistasis because we've got the interaction of one gene with another or rather the interaction of the proteins from one gene with the proteins produced by another gene. So Little d, little d causes black to turn to grey, and of course, because they're cats, you don't call it grey, you call it blue. Red to turn to cream, uh, yeah, yeah, cream, we'll call it cream. <coughs> and so uh, we have loads more phenotypes red points, cream points, blue, not grey point, <laughs> nearly called it a grey point, blue point, etc. So all these interactions are called epistasis to give these different phenotypes. Next question, a chocolate point, here we go, is a black pointed cat with the recessive little b, little b alleles. So it's not black at all. In fact, it's brown. Remember we had big b for black and little b for brown of the browning gene. So this cat is brown if it's little b, little b. And of course, because it's a cat, it's not brown, it's chocolate. And a lilac point is a chocolate point with the low density phenotype. So now how many genes have we got involved? We've got, we've got the red gene, the X big O, X little O. We've got the browning gene, big B, little B. We've got the D gene which codes for the transporter protein which carries the pigment into... Would you believe it? That's a Siamese cat making that noise. We've got the D gene which codes for the transporter protein putting pigment into the hairs themselves. We've got the C and the CS gene, the CS uh, which codes for a tyrosinase which denatures at warm temperatures and our cat is a female chocolate point with a lilac point father. We bred her with a lilac point starter and she produced nine kittens from two litters. Please predict the phenotype ratios. Pause the video here because I will work this through in just a moment. So our cat is a chocolate point with a lilac point father. Therefore her genotype will be X little O, X little O, she's not a red cat. She will be CS, CS, she's a Siamese and she's pointed. She is, she's a chocolate point, i.e. a brown cat, so she's little b, little b. And she is a chocolate point, not a lilac point. So she has at least one big D. Now I've told you she has a lilac point father, 
her lilac point father must be little d, little d. So she has a big D because she's a chocolate, but she can only get a little d off her father, so she is big D, little d. Now we've crossed her with a lilac point stud. He is, I'll have to write this below because it gets pretty busy, x little o, y. Uh, he's uh, lilac point, so he's pointed, so he's got the uh, CSCS. He is lilac, so he's a chocolate point cat with low density. So if he's chocolate point, he must be little b, little b. And then he's low density, so little d, little d. So we're crossing these together. Now, we could write out the gametes uh, produced here by our cat as this. X little o, C, S, little b, uh, big d in a circle, comma, x little o, c, s, little b, little d, in a circle. But we're not going to bother, because actually, why repeat all of these? So, I'm going to come down here now. We're going to write our cat's genotype, and we're going to put that under the title Alaska, because that's her name. And we're going to write the stud's name, Hunter, because that's his name, here. And Alaska, we'll just put big D under gametes, or little d. And Hunter, well, we're just concerned about the d gene here, so he's little d. And so our possible genotypes produce, big d, little d, little d, little d. And these ones will go on to produce chocolate points. And these ones are going to produce lilac points. And so we would expect a one-to-one -one ratio of chocolate point to lilac point coming out of this letter. A couple of questions which come out of this would be this. Uh, number one, what colour do these cats come out of the womb? Number two, what actually happened was that we got three lilac points to six chocolate points. Is that the same as having a one-to-one -one ratio? Is that far enough away from a one-to-one -one ratio to make you suspicious that there might be something else going on? Well, that's another question, a question to be answered by chi-squared. And the third thing is to say, oh, they're cute, they're quite little cutie kittens, oh, they're very really cute. Uh, this one, by the way, is a lilac point. Um, you might not really be able to see that from this. Uh, and these two are chocolate points here. Um, you can tell because this one here is slightly greater. You might not be able to tell. I don't know. I, I think you can. Um, anyway, people could eventually. Tutorial questions. Uh, can you define epistasis? Uh, can you explain three different ways that one gene could affect the expression of another gene? And go on, do it. Give all possible genotypes of a female seal point cat. And I'm going to see if I can get Alaska to make any noise. Can you make any noise, cat? Come on. Make some noise. No, that was me. Can you do a quick wow for me? No, no, she can't. She's been very shy. <coughs> Can you at least purr? Come on, let's get a purr out of you. No, nothing. Excuse me, now you've got your claws in me. No, 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 no. Thank you, I hope that's helpful.